according to that there are three types of systems divided in the thermodynamics the very first system is called as isolated system so an isolated system isolated as in the name you can say, isolated it is fully isolated so this is your system and all the other things are your surrounding and this is completely uh, isolated from the surrounding it means it is not exchanging anything with the surrounding it is totally separated so we use the isolate word in the real world as well or in the our uh, daily language as well so isolated means which is apart far apart which is not in contact we can say so similarly isolated system is not in contact with the surrounding so it cannot exchange any amount of energy and any amount of mass with its surrounding so this is what isolated system is if you look at the universe universe is considered as a isolated system why because if you look at the whole universe so we don't know the boundary of universe but suppose we just have the universe boundary for example so on that scenario in the universe boundary because after the universe there is nothing so we can say that there is no surrounding present for the universe and universe can be considered as a isolated system whatever change of energy and heat is taking place that is inside the universe only not outside of the universe so you can say that universe is a isolated system then we have a closed system what is the closed system so across the boundary of a closed system the transfer of energy takes place but the transfer of mass doesn't take place for example if i tell you just imagine a container a normal steel container or plastic container and if i close this container with a cap this cap is air tight cap okay so now this is a kind of closed system with the environment suppose i filled boiling water into this particular chamber this particular container so what will happen here the water cannot come out the water cannot be added here it means exchange of matter is not taking place but but the boiling water which is present inside this container definitely release heat outside the atmosphere outside this system so that is your surrounding so in the surrounding the air near to present this container will be heated up because of this boiling water so that is what happen in the closed system in the closed system it is a kind of air tight container or chamber where the heat energy the heat transfer or energy transfer takes place but the matter cannot exchanged with the surrounding same thing is written here across the boundary of a closed system the transfer of energy takes place but the transfer of mass doesn't take place water in a closed bottle is example of closed system as i have told you now there is another system that is called as open system now what it is open system as in the name itself you can see suppose i have a open container which is having boiling water so this is exchanging heat with the surrounding as well as some amount of water is converted into water vapor and go up, up in the atmosphere so here what you can see there is a transfer of energy as well as transfer of the mass taking place in our system so it, in open system the mass and energy both may be transferred between the system and surrounding easily this could be called as open system a steam turbine is an example of an open system where steam is generated to move the turbine and ultimately that steam is increasing the temperature of the environment as well as the water vapor is released in the atmosphere so this is the open system type of system in the thermodynamics open type of system in the thermodynamics we can say so i hope this is clear to you this is the summary of what you have seen there interaction of the thermodynamic system so this is isolated system no mass flow takes place no work flow takes place no heat exchange takes place because this is totally isolated isolated from the surrounding example here is the universe in the open system everything takes place mass flow work heat flow because this is completely open like a steam turbine then we have the closed system where only mass flow is not allowed but work and heat flow or heat exchange is allowed here in the closed system 
So you can find out only these three types of system in the universe. So every system is any of these three, where anything taking place there. So this is what systems are. So I hope systems are clear to you. Next thing here is the thermodynamic process. So what is the thermodynamic process? So any process in which temperature and heat is changing or exchanging, that is thermodynamic process. So a system undergoes a thermodynamic process when there is some energetic change within the system that is associated with changes in pressure, volume and internal energy. So maybe your wind turbine, maybe your any turbine, maybe hydrothermal turbine, maybe uh, the thermal turbine, all these are changing a form of energy into another form of energy within the system and which is associated with changing in pressure, maybe changing in volume, maybe changing in the internal energy of the things. So these all are under the thermodynamic process or these all are governed by the thermodynamic process. If you look at this thermodynamic process, the thermodynamic process can be again divided in multiple types. So here only four types according to their unique property are described here. So according to what is changing, maybe changing pressure, maybe changing volume, maybe changing internal energy. So according to that, we have four types of thermodynamic process. The very first thing here is the adiabatic process. So process where no heat transfer into or out of the system occurs. If you can remember, we have DALR, we have SALR. Now, what is DALR, SALR? In the air pollution chapter, we have seen so that is dry adiabatic lapse rate. We have saturated adiabatic lapse rate. So dry adiabatic lapse rate, so dry word I have told you that is used for the amount of moisture present in the water. If no moisture present in the water, that is dry air. And then if there is any moisture present in the water, so that is moist air. And then we have the saturated air in which the air is completely saturated, fully filled with the water vapor. So that dry and saturated word is used for the amount of water vapor present in your air sample. So that is dry and S, saturated. Now what is the adiabatic here? So I have told you there, adiabatic means there would be no increase or decrease in the internal energy of your air mass there would be only change in the volume and pressure and due to that the internal energy will change although there is no exchange of heat taking place from the surrounding but still there would be increase in decrease in the temperature due to adiabatic process now what is the meaning of this so let's suppose this is our earth surface earth boundary and here we have an air sample which is supposed totally packed with an imaginary boundary. The air is not coming inside, the air is not going outside as well. When this air mass starts flow upward side, so because in the upward side pressure is decreasing, so when will this reach will, this particular air mass will reach to this point. So now here the pressure is less, so volume will increase. So now the same air mass will have this much amount of space here. So here you can see pressure is decreased due to that volume is increased. And because volume is increased here, so there would be change in internal energy without taking any heat or giving any heat into the outside or into the surrounding. If I give you example of this particular process, so you can see your deodorant where air is very pressurized form in the very pressurized form packed. And if you release that suddenly with just spraying that deodorant, maybe in your hand so you can feel the coldness in your hand why because suddenly the pressure is released volume is increased and there is decrease in temperature so that way this is called as adiabatic process same thing takes place when air mass moving in the upside in the atmosphere so that is what adiabatic process is this is a process where no heat transfer into or out of the system occurs, but still there would be change in temperature, or change in internal energy, you can notice. So this is what meaning of adiabatic is. So I hope this is clear to you. Adiabatic process is clear to you. If not, so again, I will recommend you to go back, rewind the video, and again, try to understand. With very easy language, I have tried to explain the adiabatic process.
what is the isochoric process so here the uh, all the three processes are have one word common that is iso iso means equal so isochoric choric means volume so here isochoric means equal volume process so a process where no change in volume takes place or occurs and the system does no work that would be called as isochoric process because if there would be no change in the volume so there would be no work as well because suppose this is a system a piston system in which a piston we have so this piston will move upside or downside if there would be change in volume of this particular thing if there would be nature, no change in the volume of this particular thing so then there would be no movement of person and this movement is what this movement is your work so that's why it is written as there is no change in volume occurs and the system does no work so that would be termed as isochoric process then isobaric iso again equal baric means pressure so this is a kind of system where no change in pressure occurs so that would be termed as isobaric process then we have the isothermal process now what is the isothermal so iso means again equal thermal means temperature so there would be no change in the temperature a process in which no change in temperature occurs in the system that would be termed as isothermal process so this is what different processes in the thermodynamics adiabatic we have completed isochoric equal volume isobaric equal pressure isothermal equal temperature so this is what thermodynamics processes are so i hope this is clear to you now coming to the next part that is the enthalpy now what is the meaning of enthalpy enthalpy means simply energy if i am saying high higher enthalpy it means i am talking about the higher energy if i say lower enthalpy low enthalpy so i am talking about the lower amount of energy so enthalpy is the measurement of energy in any thermodynamic system that is what enthalpy is the quantity of enthalpy equals the total heat content of a system equivalent to the system's internal energy as i have told you internal energy of the system plus the product of volume and pressure so product of volume and pressure means the multiplication of pressure and changing volume you can say and internal energy is what u this internal energy is also changing so what i will do i will again put delta here and that equals to enthalpy enthalpy is denoted as h so here this is what enthalpy is equivalent to the system's internal energy internal energy is delta u plus plus sign i have put here then the product of volume and pressure it means multiplication of changing volume and pressure because pressure is fixed so i am not providing delta sign in front of pressure only volume is changing so i have provided delta sign in front of volume so h enthalpy is equals to delta u plus p del v that is the formula of enthalpy that you can see here as well mathematically the enthalpy h equals the sum of the internal energy e and the product of the pressure p and volume v of the system sometimes this is denoted as e and sometimes this is denoted as u both meanings are equal that is the internal energy of the system so i have used u here where h is equals to enthalpy of the system u is the uh, internal energy of the system p is the pressure v is the volume and delta is denoting the changing change in amount so that is what delta is denoting so this is what enthalpy is so i hope in the examination if in the question u energy value is provided to you in the mega joule or joule p value pressure value is provided to you in the form of pascal volume value is provided to you in meter cube so you can easily calculate enthalpy of any system the units i have told you these all are the si units so you have to put all the things in the si unit only then only you can calculate the h or enthalpy so this is how you can calculate the enthalpy of any reaction enthalpy of any particular system so i hope enthalpy is clear to you